now. Okay, thanks. Welcome to Doc's Office Hours for Jenkins. This is the European edition for Thursday, May 26th. Uh, today's agenda, we have uh, some action items that uh, if Mark wants to go over the doc mailing list archival and switching uh, to the community.jenkins.io for doc sig. Uh, we have our Google Summer of Code update regarding pipeline steps doc generator. Um, and uh, Vahan is here, so we can talk more about that. Uh, localization and internalization progress report from Alex. Uh, if he joins, we can definitely talk about that. Uh, right now, since he's not here, uh, Mark will be the stand in for us. Uh, the June LTS change log upgrade guide and blog post is something that I'm working on and we'll be able to speak to. Uh, and we have the require Java 11 epic as well, in addition to the June LTS. Uh, so I'm working on the documentation there as well. And finally, we have some uh, recap info and uh, since we're getting toward the end of our SheCode Africa partnership, uh, Mark's going to have an update for us there. Uh, so first off, uh, Mark, uh, did you want to go over the uh, this topic here, the archiving of the docs mailing list? Yeah, just to remind me that I've got to do it. We've got yeah. we've got agreement and consensus that the docs mailing list is too low usage to justify keeping it, and Google Groups is just not evolving. Whereas community.jenkins.io and the Discourse server that hosts it evolves very nicely, has a great user interface, much easier moderation tools. It's just better for us. So we'll follow the model that some other communities have done of switching from a Google Groups-based mailing list to using a, a Discourse size, site, in our case, community.jenkins.io. Wonderful. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, and uh, as far as the Google Summer of Code, Mark, would you want to... Um, share uh, anything about that or perhaps actually uh, i think that's where we let welcome yeah. vihan so vihan tell us something about yourself and uh give us an introduction to the into the uh, project hello everyone uh, this is vihan and i'm from uh, pune maharashtra india and i've been selected as a gsaw contributor for the pipeline step documentation generator improvements and under this project uh, I aim to improve the pipeline steps that are generated on the uh, Jenkins.io website. And specifically, uh, there were a couple of things that were uh, uh, that were in my mind right now. So first, the first thing was improving the layout of the page. So uh, as you can see, uh, the page has a lot of information that is uh, not abstracted or abstracted in a very uh, in the least way possible uh, for the user. And this uh, creates, uh, this, this actually um, crowds a page a lot. And if a user wishes to find a piece of information that they want, it becomes eventually harder for them. Uh, so the first improvement I thought of was to go ahead and uh, um, create a navigation bar, a sidebar uh, sort of structure. And I've included that in my proposal as well. So uh, first of all, the um, navbar that we have on our documentation currently, uh, even for that, uh, if you see, if you scroll down, so if you have a longer page and you scroll down, that navbar sticks to the uh, page and uh, it eventually disappears when you sc uh, scroll further down. So first thing, a general improvement on the entire documentation side would be to uh, create a, a sidebar that is static on the page, but which is, does not move. So user will be able to navigate easily. Uh, then what we can do is for pipeline steps specific documentation, I plan to create a separate sidebar, which would be stacked under the main sidebar, uh, much like the Java documentation, if you would have seen that. So the Oracle documentation from Java, you have those classes. And then you have those objects different different so you have for example awt and then you have all the classes for that so uh, something like that for the steps as well so for every plugin we would have uh, a section for them and when the user clicks that in the nav bar it expands and shows them all the steps associated with that section and uh, when a user clicks on that they will be led onto that page and that page again would consider uh, which uh, would, would be um consisting of a sidebar that has all the parameters of those steps. So for uh, for example, if we uh, take a step as checkout step, so for that we have different parameters. So those parameters would be listed down 
and eventually what will happen is uh, some and a piece of information that was present on a single page for a user it will be divided and the way i plan to do it would be either configuration based so we know exactly what steps need to have a separate page of their own so what parameters need to redirect to a different page so that can be configured either manually or we can do it automatically by considering a fixed a threshold value of the length of the documentation for those parameters so these were the two basic things that i had in my mind right now and yeah i am in a phase of actually learning how the documentation is generated i'm um, trying to get some pull requests on jenkins.io as well as the pipeline step doc uh, repository to get a uh, look around the code so yeah thank you wonderful that all sounds really amazing Vihan, i'm excited to see what happens and what you got what you're able to get done with that um, and just as a uh, just a just a piece of info uh, kristen and um, mark who is the other mentor uh, for uh, the google summer code i'll have to, i'll actually have to look it up i okay. i don't recall but the mentors may uh, back to your point kevin continue mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Vihan, I was just going to share that uh, the mentors for the Google Summer of Code project uh, are more often in the Asian hours for the Docs office hours. Uh, so if you want to collaborate with them, it might be easier to connect with them at that point in time. Um, it's totally up to you. You don't have to go to that meeting, but uh, they are typically there uh, as far as just being able to meet them, talk to them, get and get some more info from them. So. And uh, if you don't have the link to that, we can share that. And uh, it's also on the Jenkins events calendar. Um, so you should have that if you have access to uh, Gitter and everything else. Um, yeah, sure. So we actually discussed a probable meet time for us. And mm -hmm. uh, as of now, uh, Kristen has not reverted to that mail, but we would probably find uh, Thursday's office hour to be more suitable because Fridays is slightly early for uh, me. It's like seven thirty in the morning, so yeah. this is this is perhaps a time that is fine for me. Um, okay. And the other two mentors are uh, Tasneem Kaushal and Harshit Chopra, and uh, they both are also from India. So I guess um, it actually depends on them. So we'll we'll probably discuss and find out a suitable time for the meeting. Okay. And behind one of the don't be shy at proposing an alternate time for Asia office hours. If, if it turns out that Harshit and Kristen can, could have a better chance of meeting if we were to shift Asia office hours one hour later, we could do it. Uh, two hours later gets a little bit more of a push, but one hour later is quite easy. So, so don't be shy about saying, hey, the, the reason for Thursdays eight, for the eight Friday Asia docs office hours is so people in Asia can get there. And if that hour of the, of the day doesn't work, let's look for a better time. Now you have to be mindful that I'm 12 hours away from you and, and therefore choose carefully. If you choose noon India time, uh, you'll have to have to do it without me because midnight is, is just too late for me. But if you choose nine o'clock in the morning, India time, I can probably do that no problem. Yeah, sure. So we'll have to find a time that does not conflict with the GSOC office hours as well. So right. Uh, well, and and that was why that was why the docs office hours, the Asia docs office hours, were set where they were, is they are exactly after the old Asia office hours. Now, now that now that docs are now that. GSOC office hours have changed. They are now only happening during Europe time. But so so that gives us more flexibility on when we want to do Asia docs office hours. Oh, that's great. Then. Yeah, we can surely discuss and then uh, we let you know. Super. Thank you. Wonderful. Sounds great. Thanks, Vihan. Appreciate it. And Mark, thank you. So Vihan, did you want to did you have any desire to show us any screenshots of ideas that you've already prepared? It sounded like you've done quite a bit of, of good research. Do you, do you have anything you want to show us? Because it's kind of fun sometimes in these office hours to let, let a contributor share their screen and show us something. 
it's okay if you say no as well. Um, so yeah, current uh, for my proposal, I only uh, I had a design which were not implemented in the website. So uh, currently, uh, I have not prepared it on the Jenkins.io website uh, uh, like uh, as it is. But I plan to do that uh, very shortly because uh, the the problem with that is um, I'll have to understand uh, we'll have to create a different nav bar, right? So we'll have to, because uh, boots uh, we'll have to uh, use something that is not in the Bootstrap, which is used in Jenkins.io because Bootstrap has a very fixed nav bar layout. So even in the recent pull request, if you would have seen, I've, I've changed. Uh, like in the bootstrap nav bar, the default behavior changes slightly to suit our needs. So I have to add, okay. uh, that's the issue with current. No problem. Great. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Looking forward to it. Yeah, very exciting. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, and I just had perhaps uh, one doubt regarding that nav bar itself. So it was like, if we create a nav bar that uh, stays stationary on the page, uh, that would create an issue in the mobile view. So that was something that I clearly overlooked while writing a proposal. So I forgot about the mobile view. So I wanted to get some ideas from the community of how we can manage that, that kind of a nav bar in a, in a mobile kind of view. And I, unfortunately, I am the worst of all people, possible people to ask for, for guidance on JavaScript and page layout. I rely on page layout people to do something smart and I just write HTML or even better ASCII doc or, or Markdown. Uh, but if you were to ask the question, for instance, this might be a good excuse to open a question on community.jenkins.io and say, hey, let's talk about, maybe what you do is open the topic as jenkins.io navigation bar. And that would inspire Gavin Mogan who maintains the plugin site, plugins.jenkins.io, that uses the same nav bar um, to, to give his inputs. And Gavin has very good insights into how to do that well. So, so if you're willing, just open the question on community.jenkins.io. Yeah, that's great. I'll do that. Thank you. Well, and the benefit there is it also helps us centralize longer term discussions like that on community.jenkins.io where we can remember the context of the conversation and and collect ideas. It also inspires people, oh, GSOC's starting to talk about things on, on community.jenkins.io. Wonderful. And um... Bohan, did you have anything else you wanted to mention or talk about before we move on to the next subject or uh, where, where are you at? Um, I guess that was it from my side. Thank you. Okay, no worries. Thanks so much. And uh, Mark, do you wanna go ahead and um, discuss the localization and internationalization? Internalization? No, I was right the first time, internationalization uh, with Crowdin. Sure, yeah. So Crowdin, Crowdin is now hosting eight or nine plugins. We'll be doing a, we'll be presenting a, an internationalization um, live stream or I don't know, yeah, a live stream with Darren Polk uh, that will describe how to internationalize a Jenkins plugin. Uh, documentation updates are needed. And there is a lot of work to do to do internationalization uh, because it requires code changes. And so this is a good opportunity for us to look forward to Hacktoberfest or to other contributing events. So DevOps world, contribute contribution sequences, uh, workshops, those kind of things. And in those places, we'll try to encourage people to help us internationalize plugins and Jenkins core. That's it for me, Kevin. Awesome. That's, that all sounds really great, Mark. I'm excited to see what happens there. Um, next up, we have the June LTS change log upgrade guide and blog post, which uh, I'm actually working on. And uh, I've been partnering up with the community developers, Basil Crow, uh, others to get a better idea of what they're looking for in the blog post and uh, just as far as 
uh, what we need to do for the end user in this case. Um, there are going to be some changes uh, since the LTS will be getting released in a few weeks. Uh, there will be some uh, changes that need to happen to the documentation and some updates uh, in regards to the requirements and uh, baseline, or not baseline, but uh, the Java version that is being used, among other things. Um, uh, further backports are expected due to uh, the amount of change that's going to be happening. Uh, and uh, one of the bigger changes that's uh, going to be noted in a blog post that I'm uh, going to be writing is that the uh, GIF and PNG images in Jenkins core uh, have been updated to SVG images. Uh, and the idea is that it's going to create a better user experience. The images will be higher quality, more clear. Uh, and will just overall lead to a better view of Jenkins in that regard. Um, there are some hangups with the plugins that we'll need to address, um, but they'll have to be addressed by the maintainers. So uh, I'm keeping all that in mind when creating the blog post and making sure that everything is very clear and, uh, can, and uh, descriptive enough that we should be able to get uh, everything taken care of. Um, it's going to be a, it may the LTS will uh, may may appear differently from the weekly to some degree due to the release cycle, uh, but all the information should still be 100% correct and accurate and valid. So, um, and then we also are looking towards the future and the requiring Java 11 epic that we have. Uh, so the package documentation and user documentation will need to be updated, which are the two tasks that I'm currently working on as well. Uh, I've, again, checked in with Basil, checked in with Mark, and uh, collaborated with the community team to get a sense of what needs to be updated and what we need to be on the lookout for. Uh, and thankfully, everything's been very, very uh, collaborative, symbiotic, just clear, concise, whatever you want to put it, uh, that uh, I know what to do and take care of and who to ask if there are any questions along the way. Uh, my goal is to have uh, a lot of that taken care of by the end of next week, uh, beginning of the week, the next week, um, but uh, it'll come in time. And, um, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, also working on screenshot updates for Jenkins itself. Uh, so I'm working on that to get the screenshots updated and be reflective of what Jenkins is now as opposed to what it was previously. Uh, that just means making sure that everything looks uh, correct and updated, uh, making sure that icons are represented properly and uh, ensuring that the descriptions of these images are also accurate, making sure that there's uh, no excess or unwanted information tied to them. Um, and the idea is to have that finished by the June LTS, which is going to be June 16th, uh, so that everything is looking nice and pretty and right for the release. Uh, yeah, I think that's all from me on that stuff, Mark. Um, if you have anything, do you have anything to add or want to bring up as well? No, that's great. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. Yep, great. Then, uh, if you want to go ahead and uh, talk about and share about the Shikoda after contribute on. And I know it's wrapping up shortly or soon. So yeah, so I'll be creating um, a blog post and a brief video to highlight the, the accomplishments, mm -hmm. highlight the results. Uh, screenshot updates is really timely because of the June LTS that will change the UI in significant ways. Uh, inclusive naming, we made good progress and identified a number of places where we still need to do more checks to see have we removed as much of the inclusive naming issues, as many of the inclusive naming issues as we can. And then pipeline help, uh, we got three or four good pull requests there on a relatively complicated topic. That's it for me. Okay. Yeah, and, um, and so do by end of this week. Oh, there is a, I take it back. There is one more thing. Uh, on Saturday, Saturday, 
um, will be the is the final wrap up meet is the conclusion meeting of the project of she code africa contribute on 2022 exciting i i uh, i love that i've been able to join and be a mentor in all of this i've learned a lot and i've really enjoyed collaborating and working with the women uh, in the project they've just been fantastic and have done so much uh, good work and everything so just a special shout out to them thank you mm -hmm. of course okay um well that covers our agenda for today thus far mark Vaughn, did you have anything else that you wanted to bring up talk about mention here in the office hours Nothing from me. Okay. Yep, I guess that's it from my side as well. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate it. Great. Uh, so in that case, we'll stop the recording.